In today's video, we're going to share a game we call Trade Up. We use this game to introduce place value and trading. It's a simple activity that demonstrates where quantities should go, and it has lots of opportunity for kids to practice the physical act of trading quantities correctly. So, let's see how Trade Up plays. This is a game for kids who are learning place value, learning two-digit and larger numbers, as well as how to add two-digit numbers and need to learn how to trade properly. This game is useful because each time we enter a number, we are going to be subitizing. And secondly, the abacus that we use is a visual representation of quantities in their correct place values. Now, one of the cool things about playing Trade Up is that after we have played this game a few times, kids get to level up to playing Melbournes. This is a card racing game that we will cover in the next video. So understanding the place value and building up that trading skill is totally worthwhile to unlock this fun and exciting game for them. If you want to make sure you don't miss it when the video on Melbourne's premieres, make sure to subscribe. To play this game, you'll need a deck of UNO cards or regular playing cards, and most importantly, our favorite math manipulative, the learning resource Abacus. Now, we use this Abacus a lot because it's so versatile. We use it to subitize quantities quickly. Five blue beads and three beads is eight. Sometimes you can also look at that as two less than 10. But either way, you don't need to count it when you have the Abacus to subitize. We also use it to learn mental math addition. Four and three is instantly seven without having to count. Or if we put seven and eight together, you can see that there are two fives, which make 10, and then the two and three make another five. So three fives makes 15. Now, to play Trade Up, we're going to use a regular deck of UNO cards without the special cards. Shuffle the deck and place the draw pile in the reach of all the players. Each player should have an abacus as well. For this game, we are going to flip to the back of the abacus. On this side, the value of each bead depends on what row it is in. They are the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. If you don't have this abacus, you can download one from the app stores using the links in the description box below. But having the real thing is better. Make sure to download the correct one because this is the one that has the reverse side showing the place value columns. On your turn, players take turns drawing a card from the draw pile and entering that number on their abacus and then trading when it's necessary. So let's say we drew an 8 first. We enter it like this. On our next turn, we draw a 7 and we add that to the 8. Immediately, we can see two 5s here and another 5 here which makes 15, just like we saw on the other side earlier. Now we can trade 10 beads from the 1s columns for 1 in the 10s columns, so that represents 10. And now you see 1, 10 and 5 1s which is also 15. So let's keep going for a few more turns. Now we keep going until the first person reaches 100 and wins. I love that I can slowly scale up this game in complexity as kids become more comfortable with trading in the different place values. After that, we can play longer games or use double digit numbers to push up the target number to 1000. There's only one modification that I highly recommend, which is to use larger numbers by their math names because this helps tremendously with kids understanding place value and trading. A good way to start is to call them out by their transparent numbers or math names first so kids instantly recognize how many ones, tens and hundreds are in a number. If you want to find out how we play Melbourne's and practice more place value and trading, make sure to check it out in the playlist at the end of this video or check out other videos in the description box on using games to teach kids and I can't wait to see you in a future one.